hai radha madhava kunja vihai jay om vishnu pad paramam sa parv jagat charja astur shri shri madhus bande shri bhakti vedanta swami prabhu pad ki jay anant koti vaishna ki jay iskan samstap kacharya shila prabhu pad ki jay namcharya shila haridas takur ki Pemse Goh Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adrita Gadadhar Shri Bas Adi Goh Bhaktaminda Ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shaimakun Radhakun Shri Govardhan Ki Jai Shri Dhamandam Ki Jai Shri Mayapur Navadriptam Ki Shri Ayodhya Dham Ki Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamuna Mai Ki Jai, Tosi Devi Ki, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhakti Vinay Ki. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Gok Premanandi Hari Hari Bhoon. Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Yetaiva Surya, Pihitas, Chayaya, Svaya, Chayam, Cha, Rupini, Cha, Sanchakasti, Sanchakasti, Evam, Gunena Pito, Gunan Tom Atma Pradipa Guni Nash Cha Buman. So this meter is a thirteen syllable meter. Each line has thirteen syllables. It's called Ati Jagate. Yatai vasu ya pitas cha ya ya svaya. Chayan charupani cha sancha kasti. Evam gune na pito gunan stvam Atma pratipo guni nas chabuman Yataiva surya pihitas cha yayas faya Chayam cha rupani cha san cha kasti Evam gune na pito gunan stvam Evam 
Atma Pradipo Guni Nascha Buman Yataiva Surya Pitascha Yayasvaya Chayam Charupani Chasan Charkasti Evam Gune Napito Gunan Stam Atma Pradipo Guni Nascha Buma Please chant. Ladies, Yetaira Surya Pita Chayaya Saya Chaya Charupane Chasan Chakasti Yet the Eva, Eva. <clears throat> just as Surya, Surya. The, sun, the sun, Peta, Peta. covered, covered. Chaya, -ya. Chaya -ya. by the shade, shade. Spaya, its own, own. Chayam. The shade. the shade, cha, cha. and, and. Rupani. rupani, invisible forms, invisible. Cha. cha, also, also. Sanchakasti. Sanchakasti, illuminates, illuminates. Evam. Evam, similarly, similarly. guna. By the material quality of false ego, apitaha covered gunan the qualities of matter, tam you atma pradipa self luminous. Gunina, the possessor of these qualities, the living entities, <clears throat> Cha, and 
Bhuman, O Almighty One, O Almighty One, just as the sun, I'll just read it. Though hidden by a cloud, illuminates the cloud and all other visible forms as well. So you, although hidden by the material qualities, remain self-luminous and thus reveal all those qualities, along with the living entities who possess them. Report. Here Lord Shiva further clarifies the idea expressed in the final two lines of the previous verse. We'll definitely go back and look at the two previous lines. The analogy of the clouds and the sun is appropriate. <clears throat> With its energy, the sun creates clouds which cover our vision of the sun. Yet it is the sun that allows us to see the clouds and all other things as well. Similarly, the Lord expands his illusory potency and thus prevents us from directly seeing him. Yet it is God alone who reveals to us his covering potency, namely the material world. And thus the Lord is Atma Pradip, self-luminous. It is the reality of his existence that makes all things visible. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshusun Melitam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Parakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sri Sri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Raghunath Tam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savarutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Shcha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopi Shagopi Ka Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavan Ishvari Vishabhanu Suta Devi Panamami Hadni Priye Manchakalpa Tarubhyas Chakripa Sindhu Bhyeva Chapatita Nampavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yatai Vasurya Pitaj, Chayaya Svaya, Chayam Charupani Cha Sancha Kasti, Evam gune na pito gunanstam atma pradipo guninas chabuman.
The sun, although hidden by a cloud, illuminates the cloud and all other visible forms as well. Similarly, you, O Almighty One, although hidden by the material qualities of this world, remain self-luminous, and thus you reveal all these qualities along with the living entities who possess them. So we're, we are associating with Lord Shiva. This is a prayer by the Lord Shiva to Krishna. After Krishna fights with Banasura, Shiva was supposed to be able to protect Banasura. As a last resort in the fight, he brought forth his heat weapon. <clears throat> and Krishna counteracted it with the Narayana drawer, the cold weapon. I was once sitting in a garden in America with Srila Prabhupada and the devotees when in the evening the devotees were reading this pastime and Srila Prabhupada was listening to it just as we were listening to it. The cold weapon defeated the heat weapon. And so the heat weapon prostrated himself and, and prayed to Krishna, please don't kill me. And Krishna protected the heat weapon. And then Lord Shiva said to Krishna, uh, please also don't kill the demon, Banasura. I promised him that he would not be killed. And Krishna said, how can I kill him? He's a descendant of Prahlad Maharaj. I promised Prahlad Maharaj I would not kill him or Bali Maharaj or the descendants in that line. So now Lord Shiva is instructing Banasura and he's instructing us by offering glorification to Krishna. And this verse is connected to the last two lines, previous lines of text 60, 38, 38. So we're going to look at the verse again, the verse, the last two lines you see there. They say, you are nonetheless perceived in terms of the transformations of matter affected by your illusory energy. Please repeat, you're nonetheless perceived in terms. Repeat, you are nonetheless perceived in terms. of the transformations of matter affected by your illusory energy. Transformations you sanction so that the various material qualities can fully manifest. So this is a guideline how to see God. We can perceive him in terms of the transformations of matter, which are produced by his illusory energy. And transformations are, these are sanctioned by him so that the various material qualities can fully manifest. 
So that's Krishna's reason for these transformations. He lets the material qualities fully manifest. And Lord Shiva advises us if we're observant, if we want to be God conscious, if we want to be devotees of the Lord, then perceive the Lord, see the Lord in terms of these transformations of matter. In the purport, the last two lines of this verse are explained a little bit. We read this yesterday. You may remember, you may not remember, but we read it yesterday. Sometimes we leave the class and we don't remember what the class was about because we have two ears and things go in one ear and they come out the other and the brain is empty afterward. So what to do? Um, did you ever hear of taking notes? No, no, don't make me take notes. Not in class, I don't want to take notes. If you take notes, if you write a few things down, you have a record. Then during the day you can say, hey, I know what class was about today. There was a great devotee named Jayananda in San Francisco, a disciple of Prabhupada, who sat in the class of Bhagavatam class every day with his eyes closed. But he was not sleeping, he was concentrating. And the proof of that, that he was concentrating, was that when he took the Harinam party out on the streets of San Francisco, the most distracting place in the world, any street of any big city is very distracting. It's in the mode of passion. But Jayananda remained in the mode of goodness. We would take a break on the Harinam. And then he would say, hey, you know, just like the speaker was saying in class this morning. And he would say something from the class that he remembered. And it was just like we were back in the class when we heard him speak. It was just like we were back in the protection of the chanting of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I was fortunate to have Jayananda's association when I joined ISKCON. Every year I remember January 11th and January 13th, because January 11th, 1974, was the day that I joined ISKCON. And January 13th was the first day that I heard Srila Prabhupada give a lecture. So today's the 12th. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. But first, let's look at the last two lines of the verse. The purport says yesterday they are of special philosophical significance. Why is that? Well, why is the Lord perceived differently by different persons, although he is one? A partial explanation is given here by the agency of Maya, the Lord's external potency Material nature is in a constant state of transformation, which is called Vikara. In one sense, then, material energy is unreal or Asa. Do you recognize that word from your study of Bhagavad Gita? Chapter 2, verse 16. This is right after Krishna says that the embodied soul passes from one body to another. And the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress are like the changing seasons. One who is not disturbed by the happiness and distress and the changes of the world is eligible for liberation. Then Krishna says this asat, nasata 
vidyate bhavo, na bhavo, vidyate satha. So there's sat and there's asat. Asat means non-existent or unreal. What's the quality of something that's non-existent? It does not endure bhava. Bhava means endure. So it doesn't last. Take the body, for example. The body doesn't last. The body is not sat. The body is asat non-existent or unreal. In the purport, Prabhupada says, this is the big, excuse me, I want to find the sentence. Okay, I didn't find the sentence. I thought that in the purport, Prabhupada said, this is the beginning of philosophy to, to make a distinction between the temporary and the eternal. In any event, with that distinction in mind, we'll read some more. By the agency of Maya, the Lord's external potency, material nature is unreal, asat. It's in a constant state of transformation, vikara. But because God is the supreme reality, and because he is present within all things, and all things are his potency, material objects and energies possess a degree of reality. Therefore, some people see one aspect of material energy and think, this is reality, while other people see a different aspect of material energy and think, no, this is reality. Being conditioned souls, we are covered by different configurations of material nature, and thus we describe the Supreme Truth or Supreme Lord in terms of our corrupted vision. Yet, even the covering qualities of material nature, such as our conditioned intelligence, mind, and senses, are real, being the potency, being the potency of the Supreme Lord, and therefore, through all things we can perceive in a more or less subjective way the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is why the present verse states, Pratyashe, you are perceived, you are nonetheless perceived in terms of the transformations of matter. Furthermore, without the manifestation of material nature's covering qualities, the creation could not fulfill its purpose, namely to allow the conditioned souls to make their best attempt to enjoy without God so that they will finally understand the futility of such an illusory notion. So I see a certain configuration of material energy, and so does everybody else. <clears throat> it's subjective thing. My life, my world. And we all have to work with what we're given. We're all given a certain false ego and a corrupted intelligence. And we have to work through that and become devotees. In, in 1970, I first met devotees who had 
come to the city where I was going to the university, they stayed in an apartment in an apartment i didn't go to the apartment they came to the university and and i met them there or they went to the shopping parts of the city and i met them there i got an isha Upanishad from a book distributor who was standing in the cold in the winter outside a big store and I was really impressed. There was a beautiful picture of Srila Prabhupada playing the kartals with his eyes closed. And inside the book were Sanskrit verses. And then a friend of mine got a book from another devotee. It was the Krishna book. And it was published by George Harrison, Srila Prabhupada's good friend. Harrison, Hari's son, Prabhupada said, Hari's son, Hari's son. So, my friend and I looked through the Krishna book, and the first thing we did is look at all the pictures. And we thought, this must be something important because George Harrison published this book. To us, George Harrison was a cultural hero. He was almost a demigod because he made beautiful music. But he was interested in God. And so my move in the direction of becoming a devotee was to think like George Harris said, when I was thinking at home, once I was at my parents' home and I was thinking, what direction is my life going to take? Well, I was remembering George Harrison. And I was thinking, he became a devotee of Krishna. And I remembered also the first time I chanted Hare Krishna with the devotees. I was in Germany and Heidelberg. Prithu helped open that preaching center. If Prithu was here, he would remind, he remind, he reminds us, reminded me the other day, I helped open that preaching center in Heidelberg. So when I went there, there was an American devotee there, fortunately, and I heard a class because he could speak English. And that's the place I chanted in Kirtan for the first, first time. The class was important. The class gave me a philosophical grounding foundation. The class, the devotee chose to speak about the verse that if you water the root of the tree, then the water is distributed to all the branches and the leaves. And the analogy is that if we serve the root of all existence, Lord Vishnu is the root of all existence, of all living entities, then we'll satisfy everyone. We won't have to try to satisfy this group of people or that group or my family or my country. For a college student, that is a very relevant message because a college student is trying to figure out what to do with his life. How is he going to direct his energy, and, and, and how is he going to be happy? In the last year of college, I enrolled in a class by a very famous teacher at the time, he had a big reputation. He was a prize-winning writer. He was, in fact, a poet. He won one of the biggest prizes for his poetry. I had not read his poetry, but I enrolled in the class because he was not teaching poetry. He was teaching a course about the American character 
So he was teaching about 20 students only. It was a special class. And the curriculum was that we had to read a number of books, novels, mostly novels, written by American writers from the start of the time of America. That would be about, you know, 1700, 1750. America declared independence from England in 1776, the Declaration of Independence. So by reading these novels, we would study the American character. What, what kind of person is the American? How is the American different than the European? Or different than the American Indian? So that was the, uh, what is it? That was the configuration of material nature for that class. We're going to study the American character. Identify as Americans, read American novels. So that professor was very interesting. Uh, the first article I wrote up for Back to Godhead magazine was about that professor. And in the article, I compared what he knew to what Srila Prabhupada knew. And I explained how I turned from acquiring knowledge from a brilliant professor to, who really wasn't so brilliant in all ways. He didn't know everything, <laughs> of course. But he was a brilliant teacher in some ways. He was influential in my life, but Srila Prabhupada was more influential. So I wrote this article about him and Prabhupada. The first line of the article was, uh, the professor John Berryman was my teacher at the University of Minnesota. The year that he jumped off a bridge over the Mississippi River and killed himself at the age of 57. So this professor made me think in more ways than one. After his death, I had to think about whether this would happen to me if I became an academic. Would I want to end up like Berryman, completely frustrated? Why was he so frustrated? When I wrote this article for Back to Godhead, I had to look into his life. I had to read his poems. And I could explain, then I could explain his frustration. He was not an atheist. He was actually sometimes inquiring about God. Is there a God? Who is God? Why do people have such a bad relationship with God? He was quite aware that people have a very weak relationship with God. And he explored that in his thinking and his writing. <clears throat> so, if you want to read that article, it's on my blog. I also wrote later in the years, 19, in the year 2015, the 50th anniversary of Srila Prabhupada coming to America, I wrote an, an article about Prabhupada for Back to Godhead. Prabhupada excelled our university teachers. He excelled our cultural heroes, like George Harrison. George Harrison was his student. George Harrison was a student of Prabhupada. Prabhupada was superior to our cultural heroes. Prabhupada knew more than our college professors, and he knew more than the parents we had and the generation of our parents. You know, sometimes you look up to your parents and the older generation, and you expect to find models of how to live as a good citizen. 
how to trust the institutions in the world, how to become a good person. But, but even our parents were corrupted. They had their own uh, corrupted intelligence and, and different configurations of material nature. So eventually I came to India as a result of joining ISKCON, but not until 1986, 80, 1986, the centennial, quincentennial, 500th anniversary of Lord Chaitanya's appearance in the world. That was the first time I came to India. And actually India was quite interested at that time in the 500th anniversary of Lord Chaitanya's appearance. When I went to Calcutta, I saw a billboard. You call them a hold-in? Is that the correct word for billboard? A hold-in? So State Bank of India, State Bank of India in Calcutta put up a billboard about Lord Chaitanya. Yay! What did it say? Very simple message. They're so expert at writing, you know. Four words, 500 years of him, that's all. State Bank of India, 500 years of him. What him? Was it H-I-M? No. What's him? H-Y-M-N. What's him? That's Kirtan. But in a Christian sense, there's a Christian overtone to the word him, right? So some Christians in India could identify with the word him. It means glorifying God. And the clever Bengalis and everybody else, they would understand, oh, him, him means kirtan. Prabhupada said, when they sing in the church, that's also kirtan. Also in 1986, what happened also in my life that was important? I met the architect of Sri Sri Radharasa Bihari Temple, Sarabi Swami. I stayed with Sarabi Swami for a few months in Punjabi Bagh. He designed this temple and the Vrindavan Temple to be so similar. Practically, when you're in Vrindavan, you, you can understand how Vrindavan and, and Jew Temple are alike. Or if you're in Juhu, you know Vrindavan temple. See so many similarities in how he built these temples under the direct inspiration of Prabhupada. Prabhupada empowered him. It's quarter to nine. Um, but I just wanted to say one, I'll say one thing I wanted to talk about the Indian configuration of material nature. As I said, I came to India for the first time in 86. And altogether, I've spent more than 10 years in India editing. Editing is my service. I've edited books in India. I've been a pilgrim. I learned, uh, <clears throat> I'm reading a book about India, the rise of the East India Company. Leo Tolstoy, famous Russian writer, he's quoted at the beginning of the book, a commercial company enslaved a nation comprising 200 million people. 200 million people were enslaved by a commercial company, the East India Company. This book is the history of the East India Company. 
And it talks about some of the unsavory or unpleasant people who came to India and, and were really mean people. They were mean people based, the author tells about their life in England and shows that some of these people were really mean before they came to India. And then when they got to India, they used their meanness against India. Interesting stuff. And now, you know, you people in India, you didn't declare your independence from the British until 1947, and the Americans did it in 1776. And the Americans who declared independence, they were young men. A lot of them were young men. The people who wrote the Constitution of the United States, they were in their 30s. They were only in their 30s. Brilliant, brilliant leaders. Who wrote the Constitution of India? I know. What's his name? Ambed? Right. Now in India, everyone can feel some pride that the temple in Ayodhya is going to open, but not the Congress leaders. I read that the Congress leaders like Mrs. Gandhi and a couple others, they are boycotting the temple opening because they're saying the temple is being politicized. It's being celebrated as a political tactic to get the people's attention, to win the people's sentiments to the party of Naren, Nar, Narendra Modi. <clears throat> okay, I'll stop there. And you can <clears throat> maybe ask a question or two. Hare Krishna. We always hear this point that uh, Lord Krishna did not want to kill the descendants of Prahlad Maharaj. Did not want to kill descendants of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj says that Krishna did not want to kill? He did not want to kill Banasur because he is a descendant of Prahlad Maharaj. <clears throat> Please repeat. Krishna did not want to kill. But he did so to defend his devotee? Is that no, no. Krishna, Krishna did not want to kill descendants of Prahlad Maharaj. He gave a benediction to him. Oh, right. The, the followers of the, the descendants of Prahlad, he didn't want I, to kill. I feel uh, just like Banasur, he is a devotee of Lord Shiva. So he is not going to get Krishna Prema. But if the Lord kills him, uh, he would get liberation. So what is the advantage of leaving them alone like that. I almost, I almost followed, but I didn't quite follow. What is the advantage of Krishna leaving them uh, alive without killing them? Because Krishna, if Krishna kills, they will get liberation. Yeah, if, if Krishna would kill Banasura, Banasura would be liberated, that would be great. But Krishna left him, so what, what was the advantage? That, that was explained in the Krishna book. I was reading this chapter in the Krishna book last night. And he explains that he lets Banasura live uh, with four arms. He allows him four arms. He cuts off all the rest. And he says, now he can live. And he kind of indicates that there's some purpose at the moment, I forgot, but I remember reading last night that he says there's some purpose for Banasura's living. So he allowed him to continue to live. We could have, we, 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 anybody wants to really quickly look up Krishna book Banasura, why did, 
It's, ex it's given. There's a reason given. Krishna gives a reason, but I forgot. I read it last night. Now, you know, Panasura wants to live. He wants to enjoy life like everyone. So he, he's changed. By Krishna's association, he's changed. Uh, he, he's not a big demon Just anymore. like uh, Denukasur, they say Denukasur was not killed by Krishna, but Lord Balaram killed him. Because uh, they say that Denukasur is a descendant of uh, uh, Hiranyakashipu, and uh, the Lord Krishna cannot kill Denukasur. And then uh, Balaram killed Denukasur, and then the Lord Krishna killed other associates of Denukasur. But I think Denukasur must have got uh, liberation because Lord Balaram no, he is not different from Krishna. Denukasura, yeah. Killed by Balaram, not Krishna, yes. Was there some reason Krishna didn't kill him? Same thing. Denuka, they say that Denukasura is a descendant of Ravana, uh, this uh, Hiranyakashipu. Please repeat. Denukasur is also he was a descendant of uh, Prahlad Maharaj. Oh, he is? Is he really? That's what Acharyas, they comment that uh, that's why Lord Krishna cannot kill Denukasur. Oh, not kill right? Because okay. then that is why Lord Balaram killed Denukasur. And then associates of Denukasur were killed by Krishna. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> that's interesting. Also, the fruits, you know, the, the fruits that were kicked, or, or yeah, the, the fruits that came out of the tree, which the boys had wanted, they were considered contaminated because they were touched by the blood and on the ground, the blood of the donkeys was on the ground and, and it was, they couldn't eat the fruit. That part from Krishna book, I've got it. You want me to read? Okay. So after uh, Lord Shiva prays to Krishna, Krishna responds, My dear Lord Shiva, I accept your statements and your desire for Banasur is also accepted by me. I know that this Banasur is the son of Bali Maharaj and as such I cannot kill him because that is my promise. I gave a benediction to King Prahlad that all the demons who would appear in his family would never be killed by me. Therefore, without killing this Banasura, I have simply cut off his arms to deprive him of his false prestige. The large number of soldiers which he was maintaining became a burden on this earth and I have killed them in order to minimize the burden. Now he has four remaining arms and he will remain immortal without being affected by the material pains and pleasures. I know that he is one of your chief devotees. So, you can now rest assured that henceforward he need have no fear from anything. Mm. So, he even says that Banasur is now immortal. So, he, he became like changed completely. We talk about a transformation, you know. One day you're an ordinary mortal. And you associate with Krishna and you become immortal. This is the last question. I'm not going to go. Someone Who's, yesterday was going quite long. Question in Chaitanya. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhuji. In Chaitanya Charitamrut, I was reading a shloka. It says, Shiva himself says, Aham Vetti. Sukaveti, Vasoveti, Navetiva, Bakya Bhagavatam, Grahyam, Nabudya, Najatikaya. So I wanted to know uh, Shiva is saying Vasa Veti Naveti. What exactly it means? Veti Naveti means Shiva Shiva says may know, may not know. Oh, 
Okay. All right. TK? All right. Stop there. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Glory to Srila Prabhupada.